Welcome to Certification Terminal, your ultimate destination for all certifications. We are thrilled to have you here. Today, we're diving into another video of ISACA CISA Certification Practice Exam Series. Let's dive in. Question number 9. What should be the primary focus of an IS auditor in an organization where an IT security baseline has been defined? Option A, implementation. Option B, compliance. Option C, sufficiency. Option D, documentation. The correct answer is. Option B, compliance. An IT security baseline represents a set of minimum security standards and configurations that an organization has established to protect its information systems. The role of an IS auditor is to verify whether the organization's current security practices and controls align with the requirements outlined in the baseline. The IS auditor evaluates whether the organization's IT security controls and practices comply with the established baseline. This involves reviewing policies, procedures, technical configurations, and security measures to ensure they meet the baseline's requirements. The IS Auditor identifies any gaps or deviations between the organization's current security posture and the requirements specified in the IT security baseline. These discrepancies may indicate areas where the organization is not fully compliant and may require remediation to align with the baseline. Based on the assessment, the IS Auditor provides recommendations and reports to management regarding the organization's compliance with the IT security baseline. This helps stakeholders understand the effectiveness of current security controls and areas where improvements are needed to achieve compliance. Question number two. What is the most reliable indicator that an application system has achieved its agreed upon level of service? Option A, CPU utilization reports. Option B, security incident reports. Option C, bandwidth usage logs. Option D, transaction response time. The correct answer is. Option D, transaction response time. Transaction response time directly reflects the performance experienced by users interacting with the application system. It indicates how quickly the system responds to user requests, which is a critical aspect of service quality. Transaction response time is often a key metric defined in SLAs between service providers and customers. Meeting or exceeding the agreed-upon response time demonstrates adherence to these SLAs. The response time experienced by users is a crucial factor in determining user satisfaction. If users perceive the system as responsive and efficient, it generally indicates that the system is meeting its intended level of service. Question number 3. What measures should be implemented to minimize system downtime for maintenance in the most effective manner? Option A, nightly full backups. Option B, warm site. Option C, clustering. Option D, virtualization. The correct answer is. Option C, clustering. Clustering involves grouping multiple servers together to act as a single system, providing redundancy and failover capabilities. In the event of a hardware failure or maintenance activity on one server, the workload can automatically be shifted to another server in the cluster without interrupting service, thus minimizing downtime. Clustering solutions are designed to ensure continuous operation of critical services. With redundancy built into the cluster, maintenance tasks can be performed on one node, while the others continue to handle user requests, reducing the need for scheduled downtime. Clustering provides fault tolerance by detecting and recovering from failures automatically. This proactive approach helps minimize the impact of hardware or software failures on system availability. Question number 4. What is the most reliable method for evaluating the effectiveness of a newly installed intrusion detection system? Option A. Conduct attack simulation. Option B. Inspect IDS configuration. Option C. Review audit logs. Option D. Implement access control. The correct answer is. Option A. Conduct attack simulation. Attack simulation involves mimicking real-world attack scenarios to assess how effectively the IDS detects and responds to different types of threats. 
By simulating various attack techniques, such as port scanning, malware infiltration, or denial-of-service attacks, organizations can gauge the IDS's ability to identify and mitigate these threats. Attack simulation allows for a comprehensive evaluation of the IDS's capabilities across different attack vectors and scenarios. It provides insights into the system's detection accuracy, response time, and effectiveness in identifying both known and unknown threats. Attack simulation helps validate the configurations and tuning parameters of the IDS. It allows organizations to identify any misconfigurations or gaps in coverage that may impact the system's ability to detect and respond to attacks accurately. By identifying weaknesses in the IDS through attack simulation, organizations can take proactive measures to strengthen their security posture and mitigate potential risks. This proactive approach helps enhance the overall effectiveness of the intrusion detection system. Question number 5. Which test method among the following options is deemed appropriate for evaluating a business continuity plan? Option A. System. Option B. Walk through paper. Option C. Pilot. Option D. Unit. The correct answer is. Option B. Walk through paper. This method involves a facilitated discussion where participants step through the BCP scenario using the documented plan. It allows for identifying gaps, inefficiencies, and communication issues without actually disrupting operations. This approach is a cost-effective way to assess the BCP's overall flow, decision-making processes, and resource allocation plans. From a CISA perspective, focused on cost-effective initial evaluation, a walkthrough test using the documented BCP is the most appropriate method. It allows for identifying weaknesses and improving the plan before conducting more disruptive tests like pilot exercises. Question number 6. What is the initial step when setting up governance for enterprise IT among the following options? Option A. Implementing a balanced scorecard. Option B. Performing an enterprise risk assessment. Option C. Creating the appropriate environment. Option D. Identifying the technology direction. The correct answer is. Option C. Creating the appropriate environment. Before implementing specific governance mechanisms or processes, it is essential to establish the appropriate environment that supports effective governance. This includes defining organizational culture, values, and principles that align with the objectives of governance for enterprise IT. Creating the right environment sets the tone for governance initiatives and ensures that there is organizational support and commitment to governance objectives. It involves fostering a culture of accountability, transparency, and compliance with policies and regulations. Creating the appropriate environment lays the groundwork for developing governance frameworks, structures, and processes tailored to the organization's needs and objectives. It provides a solid foundation for implementing governance practice as the drive IT strategy, risk management, and performance improvement. Question number 7. What type of evidence would typically provide the highest level of reliability for an auditor among the following options? Option A, assurance from line management that an application is working as designed. Option B, ratio analysts developed by the IS auditor from reports supplied by line management. Option C, trend data obtained from worldwide web sources. Option D, a confirmation letter received from a third party verifying an account balance. The correct answer is Option D, a confirmation letter received from a third party, verifying an account balance. Third-party confirmation letters are obtained directly from external sources, independent of the entity being audited. This independence enhances the reliability of the information, provided as it is less susceptible to bias or manipulation. Confirmation letters directly verify specific financial balances or transactions with external parties, such as banks, customers, or vendors. This direct confirmation ensures the accuracy and authenticity of the information being confirmed, making it highly reliable. Confirmation letters are widely recognized and accepted as a reliable form of audit evidence by legal and professional standards. They provide a documented record of external verification which can be used to support audit findings and conclusions. Question number 8. 
Which of the following options is an effective means to prevent dangling tuples in a database? Option A, relational integrity. Option B, referential integrity. Option C, domain integrity. Option D, cyclic integrity. The correct answer is Option B, referential integrity. Referential integrity ensures that relationships between tables in a relational database are maintained accurately. Specifically, it ensures that any foreign key value in one table matches a primary key value in another table. In other words, it prevents the creation of dangling tuples by ensuring that foreign key values always reference valid primary key values in related tables. Referential integrity constraints are typically enforced through database management systems by defining relationships between tables and specifying actions to be taken when primary key values are modified or deleted. For example, cascade updates or cascade deletes can automatically propagate changes to related tables, ensuring consistency and preventing dangling tuples. By enforcing referential integrity, databases can maintain data consistency and integrity. This prevents situations where foreign key values in child tables refer to non-existent primary key values in parent tables, which would result in dangling tuples. Question number nine. What should be the primary focus of an IS auditor in an organization where an IT security baseline has been defined? Option A, implementation. Option B, compliance. Option C, sufficiency. Option D, documentation. The correct answer is Option B, compliance. An IT security baseline represents a set of minimum security standards and configurations that an organization has established to protect its information systems. The role of an IS auditor is to verify whether the organization's current security practices and controls align with the requirements outlined in the baseline. The IS Auditor evaluates whether the organization's IT security controls and practices comply with the established baseline. This involves reviewing policies, procedures, technical configurations, and security measures to ensure they meet the baseline's requirements. The IS Auditor identifies any gaps or deviations between the organization's current security posture and the requirements specified in the IT security baseline. These discrepancies may indicate areas where the organization is not fully compliant and may require remediation to align with the baseline. Based on the assessment, the IS Auditor provides recommendations and reports to management regarding the organization's compliance with the IT security baseline. This helps stakeholders understand the effectiveness of current security controls and areas where improvements are needed to achieve compliance. Question number 10. What is the primary action that should be taken to minimize the need for rework later in a project? Option A, control review. Option B, acceptance testing. Option C, phase review with clear and defined requirements. Option D, risk assessment. The correct answer is. Option C, phase review with clear and defined requirements. Having clear and defined requirements from the beginning of a project sets the foundation for successful development. Unclear requirements can lead to misunderstandings, mismatched expectations, and ultimately, rework to fix issues arising from those unclear requirements. Phase reviews that ensure requirements are clear and well-documented are a critical step in minimizing rework throughout the project lifecycle.